This video is made possible by the following sponsors. Make sure to check out their products as well as the rest of my gear in the description below. Hey guys, Mountain Climbing Boy here and welcome back to R Factor 2 for another video. Coming up this weekend is the ever popular and world famous Bathurst 12 Hours. Now I've actually never taken part in a Bathurst 12 hour event in sim racing. I've done the 1000 which of course is in a V8 supercar. Uh, but the Bathurst 12 Hours is run primarily in GT3 and GT4 cars. So today I'm going to be taking advantage of the recently released GT3 Challenges Pack from R Factor 2 and run a five lap race around the awesome Mount Panorama circuit. My awesome liveried death machine for this video is the Audi R8 GT3 car. The reason why I picked this car is because I've actually driven this car quite a bit in iRacing so I thought it would be nice to try and make some comparisons to the RF2 version in this video. We've got 29 other GT3 cars driven by the AI in this race, so it's going to be a little bit of a fuster cluck going over the mountain for the first time, but I think it's going to be really entertaining to drive and hopefully fun for you guys to watch. So here we are then, starting 30th and the last at Bathurst in our Audi R8 GT3, a very pink edition of the Audi R8. And here we go then to start five laps of the awesome Mount Panorama circuit. Certainly one of my favourites. Now coming down to Hell Corner for the first time. I'm going to get on the brakes. I'm just going to wait behind this 720, I think. Uh, no, Porsche goes around the inside, kind of following him through. Bit slow on exit. They're two by two in front. Not really any space for me to, to sneak by, but I'm going to just uh, tuck in behind this 720S now. Maybe give him a little bit of a push up the hill. Bump draft in. We NASCAR now, boys. It's kind of working. Go on, 720S. Go, go, go. The car, I've taken some wing off the back of the car to try, get, try and make it a bit quicker in a straight line. I've got two big straights here at Baffer, so it's good to have a car that's uh, fairly decent in the top end. Oh, the Porsche gets sideways and goes off to the left hard into the wall. Hard into the wall. And that's him going out the race. Now for the cutting for the first time. Usually the Audi cutting or the BP cutting or whatever cutting is. Let's call it the Jimmer cutting. Through the Jimmer cutting. <laughs> through the, uh, through the first time and now up. Start to climb the mountain now. This is my favourite part of a circuit when you are not being impeded by cars around you. See how, how careful I'm having to be there. 650 goes into the wall. Christ, that's... Oh, and again! He's really doing his best to break that car, that AI. There's a very pretty, very odd painted vantage in front. Not really anywhere for me to go right now. I have to kind of just wait and uh, see what's going on. Now we go downhill for the first time. Car sideways. There's a car around in front, kind of blocking the course. I have to take the escape road there to get round and make sure I don't get caught up in it myself. A couple of places gain there, but we won't tell the marshal, we just need to see that. And now we go downhill towards Forest Elbow. Very tricky braking down here as an AMG goes into the AI around here. Really quite uh, quite spooky it seems. And we got the power nice and early. The AMG would slow out there. Going to try and go to the inside here. Very small gap, but we're going to take it. Another place gained. Very nice indeed. Now hopefully we can get into the draft of this 650. I can. The AMG is still next to me. I don't know where it is. I can't see it. I've not got a look right map because I'm very clever, but he's still there. And I finally get ahead now of the slipstream of the Macca in front. Right to the top of the rev range. That V10 sing as we come down through the chase. Oh, wow. The AMG tries to yeet it in front of me. Gets sideways and off he goes. Goodbye, Mr. AMG. That's a very eventful first lap of Bathurst. Nearly done coming down to Murray's for the first time or second time I guess if you include the rolling start out to the outside and that's one lap done and four to go I've got the AI aggression turned up a little bit you can probably tell because Bathurst um, some people might be wondering about the gearing thinking it's a little bit short it's actually perfect for this circuit with a slipstream and you can't adjust it anyway it's GT3 gearing so that's just how it is so not a bad first lap now, my first lap time there was a 2.23.4. To give you some context, I know it was a rather slow lap, but I had to avoid people, etc. The lap record round here in a race is 159.2, which is an absolute ludicrous time. There's no way I'm going to get anywhere near that today. Uh, I mean, that's down to a couple of factors, of course. The track isn't quite 100% accurate. The car may be a little bit slow in the real-life counterpart. We've got a yellow flag again. It's an Audi round through the Jimmy Cutting. I like calling it that. And now I had to slow down Radical in front of the car to my left as well. I think it's one of the Astons. Action all the way here. The 720 is slow on the inside. The cars go on the outside and hit the wall. McLaren on McLaren action in front. Very hot. We just managed to slide in front of the Radical. 720 goes around the outside. Finds the wall though instead of a circuit. I'm going to now go up the inside of a 720. Just about. Just about. Nice slip through. Through to Skyline now. And there's another yellow flag. AI having an absolute ham of it round here. Look at this, cars everywhere. 
just like the real life thing. Of course, in real life, this would be red flag by now, but this is sim racing. We're made of sterner stuff. I say that, of course, we're all wimps, and the idea of crashing in real life is, inter is terrifying, but... <laughs> Stern. Down to Forest Elbow again, nice and tight. Try and get the power early. The car will naturally understeer out of there, so you kind of aim it. Uh, you aim to exit a bit tighter than you usually would, but otherwise it's uh, okay. Now hopping into the sip stream once more. A bit far back now, again, we're going right to the top of sip gear. And listen to the V10 in this. I love this V10 Audi. One of my favourite GT3 cars. <laughs> Great noise, great noise, that. Uh, and usually, I don't really like GT3 cars, but when you put them on Bathurst, they just transform into these absolute weapons. I mean, this, this track, uh, you can't really race cars this much faster uh, than GT3s around here, because, because of the track limitations, really. You're going to start seeing people have really big crashes, but GT3s around here are more than enough. That was a 2.17 there, that lap time. Again, not a clear lap by any stretch of the imagination, but... A long, long way off the 159. I, I kind of do think the track is a little bit long. Also, I'm a bad driver. Um, but, you know, there are certain reasons there. But, yeah, I mean, get, getting to drive at Bathurst in a, in a uh, Enduro is a lot of fun. I must say, I'm quite enjoying this version of the R8. I think it skips around a little bit for my liking. It might be just a setup, though. I am running the baseline because I... Well, baseline with a couple of very minor changes to ARB and stuff like that. But it's, it's very skippy. I think it might be just a bit stiff for this road surface. You can see very bumpy as we come up to the Jimmer cutting. Easy, easy, easy. Really, for those corners there, you want to try and roll the car through instead of uh, push it through and brake or on throttle. Just roll it in and then trust it will stick and then get on the power. See over the top here, having to make a lot of corrections here. I think the yeah, suspension's a little bit stiff over the top. The rear end trying to come around. Wow, that was close to that wall on the right. And of course, that's a bigger law of driving around Bathurst, is just how close the walls are. You feel like an absolute fucking legend when you get it right. And look like a massive tit when you get it wrong. So, of course, I spend a lot of time doing the latter, unfortunately. A lot of times you made down there if you're brave. I am not. Easy. On the brakes, back on the power, and then before we start going downhill, of course, because the, the track just goes downhill there, You've got to be braking early. You can't brake how you would on a flat surface because gravity is working against you. But right now it is, and we get a nice big boost going down the hill. Right to the top of sixth gear. I might be even be shifting a little bit early, usually. I'm not quite sure where you can shift this thing to. What sort of RPM are we doing down the back straight here? It's got to be far over 8. 8,000 RPM. 8.1. 8.2. Nearly 8.2.5 there before braking. Bit of uphill, uh, uphill braking there, so you can get on the brakes a tad later. Again, gravity is your friend there. Gravity goes between being your best friend and your enemy around this circuit. It's uh, it's great fun. So, some cars in front. I'm starting to get them to the back of them now. Easy out to the outside there. Of course, in the real life Bathurst race, we haven't got any GT4s in this one because we wouldn't catch them in time, so it's kind of useless them being in the race. Um, but the real life has GT4s and other lower classes as well. Of course, that really cool Daytona Coupe used to race as part of this race as well. I'm not sure if it is this year. Um, but you get all these different classes of cars, all these different speeds. You just mash them all together around here. So, for example, if, you, uh, if you're if stuck behind a GT4 car coming out of the cutting, you are there for pretty much the entirety until you come out of Forest Elbow. You cannot get past unless you are really sending it. That should be third gear there. Uh, interesting enough, it was that corner, uh, Griffin's there, on the curb, that I think the lead Audi, uh, maybe a year ago or a couple of years ago, broke a drive shaft. Uh, coming out of there, that curve's quite violent in real life. They went over it, drive shaft went bop, and the car got stuck coming up through the cutting. Oh wow, so now we're getting up to a bit of a traffic jam now. I've got a radical GT3 big in my mirrors. Those things are hilarious, I love them. Great to have some cars now in a, in RF2 that kind of form a series. And I must say, like, they look all right. You know, uh, RF2 isn't probably best known for how it looks, but it's it's looked worse. I can tell you that now. They're starting to make some progress there. As one of the Maccas goes straight on, spins it, big hit, takes the Audi with it. Oh! <laughs> Wreck avoidance 100. Maybe I've got to turn the aggression down just a tad. The AI getting a little bit feisty around here. Fucking hell, it's like going down to bloody Hastings on a Friday night. People just trying to murder each other. It's the best. Anyway, back on the power again. So we've got a bit of a gap now uh, in front of us because of that. Radical has fallen back a tiny bit behind me. Um, 
But yeah, I guess my my opinions on this GT3 car is that it feels fairly decent. I wouldn't mind doing a longer race than this. That's how I kind of rate things, if I wouldn't mind driving it for a long period of time. And that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. This thing will need some setup work, though, definitely. Oh, there goes another one. AI round. This is public lobby stuff going on here. Um, compared to the iRacing GT3, this thing is a lot more savable. There's room to save it. And what I really like about this, you don't really feel this in the iRacing 4 seat back, or if I, if it is there, I haven't felt it. One lap to go, green, uh, white flag even, sorry, um, is that you can feel the ABS when you nail the brake. You can feel the ABS chattering away through the wheel, which you feel that in real life. I have done that in a car. <laughs> Did that in that GT4 McLaren, and you feel the ABS start chattering away if you if you uh, smash the brake hard enough. Of course, the, the, the goal really is to try and uh, use as much brake as possible without activating the ABS too much. Um, but you can feel it in the wheel, which is really damn cool. You don't get that in iRacing. Out to the outside. There you go, over the kerb, trying to break a drive shaft. Now up towards the Jimmer cutting for the last time. A little bit of a stutter there. Come on, let's try and get this radical. Radical man. Well, that one, the radical behind me, it's stupid fast through the corners. I've got to really try and have a fast, uh, fast mountain here. Understeer through the first part, that's not good. Understeering through there, that wall is just waiting to claim you on the left. Then the throttle, the car is all over the place, look at it, moving around. Radical gets on the kerb on the way and I understeer again, I can feel the tyres just scrubbing, but the car still going through. And then throw it downhill, see I'm modulating the, uh, the brake down there, even with ABS, trying to let the car, or stop it from going in a straight line, small touch on the wall on the right there as I just get a little bit too enthusiastic. We're now right up behind the cars in front. Could be some last minute sending here. At the inside of the forest elbow, not quite close enough. I could have put that at the inside there and probably hit him, but didn't want to do that. And now it's a drag race between myself and the radical. He comes in in front. I'm going to try and take the, the draft from the cars in front, but he's got the same too. Going to put him behind the radical for a second, get a little bit of a slipstream, then pull back out again. Go, 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 come on out. Come on, V10. The cars in front are slow because they haven't got a slipstream. Oh my. I'm going to do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Make it, make it, make it! Oh yes! The hypersend! <laughs> I have no idea how I kept that! I thought I was dying for sure, you got to make those moves in the last lap. And there you go, that is five laps of Bathurst in the GG Freeze in RF2. That was, that was a lot of fun! <laughs> Oh my, the, the last minute Sam, that was fantastic. I have no idea how the car corrected there. I've got to try and get a replay of that uh, from an external camera, but my oh my. You know what? I don't I don't really like GT3 cars, honestly. They're, they're not the kind of car that I enjoy driving, but I enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun. And uh, whilst the pack, I think, might be a, a little bit in the pricey side, I think it's like something like 15 euro for the entire pack. The cars are good. And racing around Bathurst just makes sense. So if you like this kind of thing, then I'd, I'd definitely recommend going out there and getting it. But guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I certainly enjoyed driving it. If you did enjoy it, make sure, of course, to hit that like button. If you really enjoyed it, hit subscribe to be notified of future videos. Massive thank you to all my patrons and all my members slash sponsors on YouTube. You guys are the best. Take care. Have an awesome day. Enjoy the Bathurst 12 hour.